am Chuck Dorset for Weaver Leathercraft, and this is The Leather Element. If you've got a good question for us, or a good idea for a leather element, drop it in the comment box below. This week, tooling for the rest of us. We've all seen that beautiful Sheridan, or floral, or pictorial carving, and we might think, you know what, I'll never be there. We don't have to go there. We can do simple tooling, and it is gorgeous. So we're going to do one of my favorites, a Celtic knot. We only need three tools and very little skill. And in fact, I bet you're going to be surprised the first time you sit down and try this. So let's step over here. We're going to look at how we find a design, and secondly, how do we transfer that over to our leather? We're not going to go into designing a Celtic knot because we've got too many options out there. We can go online, type in Celtic knot clip art, and we will get pages, pages of designs. We can design our own to fit a certain space. Basically, it's a crisscross pattern. Right here, that's just an out and back. One line going out, one line coming back. It's got a little bit of a Celtic feel, but it's a little bit more tribal. Right here, that's just an inexpensive template from just about any craft store. Now, we're going to go with mine. This is an old, dull design. I've had this for years, and I love it. It's a nice pointed shape. Fits a lot of places. One point, kind of a side note. We can always use clip art. We can always use this from the internet for our designs. But as soon as we sell this, that's where we start to get into a problem with copyright. So if you're going to sell your products, go ahead and design your own knots. You'll never have an issue. But we're going to keep it easy. Now, with that, we can always go as detailed as we want to or as complex as we want to. Right here, I'm going to use this. This is the old school, traditional dog pattern. In fact, keeping that simple, this is a mander. This is going to be on the top scale of a suit of armor. But again, we've got the dog and just a simple design out and back. But it looks good, doesn't it? Okay, so for this knot, what I've done is I've drawn my knot out. Now, I can always fold my paper over draw half my knot, trace that, then when I open that up, I've got a perfectly symmetrical design, both left to right, top to bottom. So let's transfer that over to some of our tracing film. There we go. Okay, that makes it ready to go onto some leather. So let's take this, step over to our punch table, and we'll scribe this in. Our first step, if you're new to leather, is we're going to wet this. This is an 8 to 9 ounce Weaver Select Veg Tan. I love the Weaver Select. But we're going to case our leather. That means we are simply going to add some water. All manner of opinion on how we should wet our leather. In fact, the gentleman that taught me a lot of my tooling would wet his leather, soak it in water, soak it for about a minute, put a little dab of dish, dish detergent or, or dish soap in there, break that surface tension. Then he would put that in a baggie and let that sit for 24 hours. I unfortunately do not have that level of patience, but at the same time, I'm not that, I'm not on his level of tooling. What I want is, in my opinion, I want water in about three quarters of that leather. Now I want a little dryness on the back because I don't want my leather mushy. I want it to take a very clean stamp. So let's do this. Let's wet our entire piece or case our leather. Now, one, one side note. Say we're doing a large panel. And we're just going to tool down in one corner. Let's wet the entire panel every time just so that we don't have water lines in case we're using, say, a lighter color dye stain or no dye at all. So right there. Notice how that leather, it takes just a second for that water to sink in. There we go, that looks good, and it's a very consistent chestnut color across. Let's give this about five minutes, let that water wick in nicely. We've given this some dry time, it's got a nice chestnut look, I can feel the leather's got a little weight, but let's do this. This is just a sample piece. There we go. Look at that, every detail can be seen in that stamp, even the smallest lines. That leather's ready to tool. So let's take our tracing film design. We're going to lay this in. Now I'm going to freehand this, but don't hesitate to use templates or French curves if you need to. If you want to make these curves very clean, you're not comfortable doing that freehand, it's no issue. In fact, on our straight lines, I'm going to use the, the edge of this template. So let's do this. Let's start to trace this in. Thank you. 
Okay, there we go, looks good. Now, I don't like to use tape or clips. It's gonna ding my leather. But it's easy enough if we, if our, our uh, tracing film shifts, it's easy enough to see where my lines are. So I can drop those in. But also an old pl a printing trick. So if I lift and drop this quickly, then I can see exactly where my lines are, if I'm close or off. But everything looks good. Okay, let's jump over to our swivel knife. Now, two ways we can go with this. First off, I can draw or push. Old school is to draw. So I'm gonna put the saddle of the tool right between my two knuckles, and I'm gonna draw this towards me. Now, the big point here, not depth. Cleanliness is what we're looking for. So what I can do is make multiple light passes. So therefore, I've got my cut in. Let's come back. Let's make another cut because now the swivel is actually um, following the cut I've already made. For me, I tend to like to push. I'm gonna use this hand and my, uh, my palm here. I lost the word. To stabilize my leather and my swivel. Now, what I can do is use these two fingers to stare and my thumb actually will push. So with me, that tends to feel more like a pen or pencil, something I'm more comfortable with, and I can get a cleaner, deeper cut in one or two passes. Now, at the end of our swivel, let's drop that in, make that a good square end. Okay, there we go. Two good swivel cuts. So I'm gonna swivel the rest of this, then we'll drop in our bevel. And our last cut, okay, well that's not bad. Looks pretty good, perfect, it absolutely is not. But neither is my skill. All right, let's jump over to a smooth bevel. I love a textured bevel. In this situation though, we're gonna go with a smooth because what we'll do is on our outside, we've got a good deep line there. Again, depth not the point, but we've got a good cut. On the inside, we'll be using a backgrounder. So let's go with a smooth bevel. Now, one thing, we're drying out here. That's hard to keep our mind on keeping our leather wet because we're concentrating on our design. So let's do this. Let's case our leather one more time. There we go. And then let's give this about five minutes. Let that water wick in nicely. Okay, got some good moisture in our leather. So let's take our bevel. Now, the one thing we've got to watch out for here is we want to bevel on the outside of these bands. Well, it's not really an issue out here, but when we get inside, we can be confused. So let's make sure we pay attention there. So let's start right here. I'm gonna take my bevel, and I'll keep my pinky right up on the, this is technically the heel of the bevel and the toe. So I'm going to keep my pinky on the toe, and I can feel that bevel sit lightly down in there. So let's take our mallet. now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make multiple passes. Let's go light. Again, we're trading pressure for control. So I can feel that bevel sit against that, that swivel cut. So let's just slowly work that out, very lightly. Okay, let's come back. Let's add a little bit more pressure because now I've got a wall there. So I, I can feel that a little bit better. Okay, getting there. Let's go one more, one more pass, a little bit harder. Good. Okay, let's see. Let's see if we can get a good pick of that. There we go. Now I've got a good, even, consistent line. So what I'm going to do is work my way around. Now I tend to, with a knot, follow the bands. So I'll work this piece both sides, then I'll come in, work this piece both sides, that way I don't miss anything. Okay, I've got that outside done. Now, let's do this one at a time too, because again, it's easy to forget. So I'm gonna take my bevel, and I'm gonna run that easily over that. There we go. So what I'm doing is I'm 
kind of pushing in that wall to make that a little more consistent. But at the same time, I'm removing my, my tool marks. So let, let me get around here and we'll take a closer look at that. Okay, good. So now we don't have tool marks. Let's see, it's a little hard to see. Let's go to the inset. There we go, that's a better pick. So no tool marks, but also I can take my bevel and I can pull it a little more outside. There we go. This is called ghosting when you see the edge of the tool. So we can smooth this down. There we go, nice. So instead of a, a hard up and then straight out, we're actually trying to smooth that to where it's a little more circular coming out. All right, so from here, I'm going to bevel the rest of our knot and let's see how that looks. Okay, perfect again. No, it's not, but it's pretty clean. So again, as always, let's make sure, let's wet our leather, starting to dry out. And one key point here too, is if you're tooling along and you start to feel that leather resist, just remember, let's add a little water. Okay, so we've got a good swivel cut, we've got a good bevel. Let's again give it a couple of minutes, let that water wick in, then let's come in. We're gonna retrace our outside. Okay, what I wanna do here, I'm gonna go back around the outside with my bevel. On the inside, we're gonna add a backgrounder. So out here, let's give this just a little better look. In fact, I'm gonna start right there. We're gonna take that just a little bit deeper. Okay, that looks good. Looking better and better, okay? Let's come in with a pear-shaped backgrounder. Now with this, pear-shaped, my favorite, because now I can squeeze that into points, but also that little rounded end, I can get that in to corners. So let's start right here. Now I don't want to butt this hard against that wall. I can feel that wall, but I want to come in just a little bit. There we go. Let's don't try to trample down that wall, which has happened. Yeah, look at that. And now when I come into that corner, that rounded end fits nicely. So I'm gonna work around the outside, then I'm gonna come back in and fill in. Let's try to make that background as consistent as we can. And coming back around, drop that point right in there. Now, let's come back around and come out just a little bit. Let's try to keep a pattern from developing in our backgrounding. So let's fill in the center. There we go, okay, let's make that as consistent as we can. Now let's move to these other five inside portions. Okay, well that looks pretty good. Some backgrounders are easier to get consistent, but it looks pretty good thus far. Now let's take our bevel. What I'm going to do is just run along the inside of where I've backgrounded. Let's don't go so hard they actually, where we actually erase our backgrounding, but let's get that wall very consistent. Looks good. One last step. Let's take a spoon and let's just smooth the outside edges of our swivel cuts. And there we go. Looks good. So basically what we're doing is if we tend to lean our swivel in or out, it's gonna develop a little bit of a lip. But by using our spoon, we can smooth that down, smooth that hard edge, and there we go. Well, that looks pretty good. Very cool, a simple Celtic knot. At this point, you're probably tired of hearing me say, it's not perfect. You know what, doesn't have to be. If we enjoy the tooling and we're happy with the outcome, you know what, 
That's all that matters. But I do hope this gives you a step into the tooling because you can take that as far as you want. I hope everything you tool is spot on beautiful. Good luck with your projects.